peace and love to all the goddesses and gods who see the God in me. Before I go any further, to all the queen goddesses, to all of my fellow king gods, as well as to all of the beautiful, lovely star seeds out there, I see you. I love you. This video right here just further underlines my point and my statement is that our sky family has returned. Now, if you don't believe that you're great, why do you have 4% extraterrestrial DNA? And I believe that you have more than that. They just giving you 4%. Ask your doctor. Yes, you, not African, not black, but an infinite light being has 4% of extraterrestrial DNA that's trickling through your blood cells. Again, black is a code name to keep you in the darkness from who you truly are. Your sky family has returned. We're going into the age of Aquarius. You're going to be able, you're going to see things and do things that you never believed that you would be able to do. Now, this is another whistleblower. The reason why the whistleblowers is coming out because the entity that they work for, either directly or indirectly, are afraid of what's coming this way. So therefore, if you see that your boss is afraid, then therefore you got to be afraid. So now, you know what? Let me start blowing some whistles so I can start warning everyone else. Again, these are not... Uh, 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 planets that's going to come in and collide and, 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 and destroy shit. Only people that are evil, only people that like to destroy stuff, only people that has no love and compassion in their heart will only think of destruction all of the time. Can't think of nothing of peace and love. Like now they are saying that there's a group of extraterrestrials that's heading here so they can make all of you people arm yourselves. There are a group of extraterrestrials that may, may be heading to Earth that's going to enslave us rape our women and they're going to uh, 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 harvest and uh, all of our resources on this planet. Ain't that shit going on right now? You mean to tell me that black women hasn't been being raped for two, over 2,000 years? No other woman means anything to me. When I say black, I'm just relating to you. some people that, most people that's on that level. We're infinite light beings. But, but my queen, my grandmother hasn't been raped for 2,000 years. You haven't built your countries on the back of my black woman. Because, see, the key, the key to enslaving us was enslaving the mind of the black woman. See, once you entrapped her God and changed her God from a female to a male, now you were able to teach the seed that. That's why we will never rise with a black male leader. We will only rise when our queen turned into goddesses. But I hope this video is informative for you. And I believe him because, again, the, with, the, um, with the sky, that's not our sky up there, and that is not our sun. They spray in the skies with selenium and barium. That's the same thing that they use in the x-ray machine. They are cloaking the devices up there so that you cannot see them. Every night and every day, there are shit that's happening above your head. Get an expensive camera. I have a Canon because it has a built-in infrared lens. Take a picture of the sky. Take a picture of the sun. You're going to see all kinds of objects up there. Peace and love to all the queen goddesses, to all of my fellow king gods, as well as to all of the beautiful, lovely star seeds out there. I see you. I love you. Again, I hope this video is informative to you. I believe this guy 100%. You don't have to believe him, but trust me, the time is slowly but surely approaching. And it's not even slowly approaching right now because if you notice, time has sped up. You notice the days are moving a lot faster. Peace and love. My name is Dr. Eric Norton. I have worked as an outside consultant for the NSA and NASA for going on 12 years now. My security clearance at present warrants my need to take the appropriate steps to keep myself protected the best I can. One of those steps is not to give too much information about myself. What I can tell you is that I have worked as an outside consultant on many projects led by our government, the U.S. government, including with, more recently, the meteoroid Environment Office, or MEO, which is involved in several research projects with installations located throughout North America. The underlying goal of these projects is to gain a better understanding of the meteoroid environment so that the MEO environment models can be improved. We basically monitor the skies, track meteors and other objects in space, and to date have made some very interesting observations to say the least, some very chilling observations in fact. Observations that if revealed to the public would not only change the game forever, and we're not just talking the breakdown of all religions and a total overhaul of everything we've ever known about the universe and space, but we're talking the breakdown of society itself. We are talking about a subject matter that, even up until today, carries with it a level of disbelief amongst the majority of the worldwide community. On January 22nd, 2012, I was called to the McDonald Observatory in Texas which happens to be the second largest optical telescope in the continental U.S. I received a phone call from an associate with the observatory, 
and was booked that night on a flight out to Texas, where I was met by an agent reporting to be with Homeland Security. Uh, he didn't say anything to me other than that he had been dispatched to see that I had reached the observatory and reviewed the information within that was awaiting me. Now, when I arrived at the McDonald's Observatory, I was met by a second man with Homeland Security, and by this time I was really dumbfounded as to what was going on as it pertained to me. I had never dealt with matters of national security, so I was really lost as to what it was that could be so urgent that it warranted this almost security guard-like behavior uh, from these two agents. I was quickly shoveled back into the main observatory chamber where I met four other gentlemen who were involved with the operations of the observatory. Uh, and what they showed me was of such a shock to even my belief system that once confirmed, I had to sit down and take a moment to get a hold of myself. What I saw, I can best explain in my own words, as an array of massive three-dimensional black structures in space, in straight line formation, advancing in the direction of planet Earth. I know this because I was shown images taken three months prior which depicted the very obvious course of direction by these things, which had moved millions upon millions of miles closer within just months. Uh, I'll, I'll let you do the math in terms of how fast these things were moving. Now I was there with the understanding that it was my job to aid in gauging exactly what type of composition these objects were made up of and whether they were man-made, natural, or unnatural to anything seen before it. Now, using the scientific instruments provided by NASA that are available to us today, we were able to discern the fact that these were not naturally occurring materials and that they were, to our best but limited understanding, some sort of metallic, carbon-reinforced material, several thousand times the structural hardness of what we have today, whether it be natural occurring diamonds or carbon nanotube-type material. The object seemed to also be emitting some sort of force field that deflected space particles from touching the surface, almost like the magnetic field around the Earth, which shields it from the sun's rays and solar material. The objects were getting so close that with our telescopes we could see the structural features of these things in high detail. The, they were shaped in the best way I can describe as a three-dimensional L-shaped craft. I use the word craft loosely, as we do not know if these things are piloted or vehicles at all in the strictest sense. All we knew is that they were moving, and moving fast. By January 2013, the objects had been tracked to about 200,000 miles past the planet Mars. Once they reached this point, almost instantaneously the objects vanished from our telescope lenses. I mean completely vanished, and as if they had activated some sort of invisibility shield at the flick of a switch. That's the best way I can describe it. We couldn't see them on any form of radar we have or any other visual medium available. We were left scratching our heads, and by this time, I knew that the upper echelons of the U.S. government were worried about these things because I was under a constant 24-7 guard by Secret Service agents who kept a close eye on me every single day since late 2012. I did not go home, go to the grocery store, or wake up in the morning without the reality of knowing that I was being watched. Some very powerful, high-up people were keeping an eye on me and the work that we were doing regarding these objects. Although I was never told about this, uh, it was obvious uh, with what I saw going on around me and the personnel involved. So for nearly the entire year of 2013, we watched the skies in disbelief of what had occurred. We didn't know what was going on or where these things were. According to my calculations, these things would have been so close to us by now that we would have no problem seeing them in the night sky had they stayed visible to us. But as I said, we didn't know whether they were still coming in the recorded direction or if they had simply left the solar system altogether. We just didn't know enough to gauge what was going on and what these things were really here for. I was sent home awaiting orders to continue my work if needed, and for some six months I did not hear so much a phone call regarding the situation. Uh, it wasn't until all of this commotion regarding the government shutdown particularly of all the space surveillance projects, that I made some calls to see what was going on. Sure enough, what I had feared the most had been confirmed after I contacted a close friend whom I had worked with confidentially on this project at the McDonald Observatory. I asked him what was going on, and was there something to all of these space monitoring programs being shut down, including NASA, and was there cause to worry? My colleague sounded extremely unnerved when I spoke with him. At 
one point it was almost as if he was trembling in his speaking. And I asked him, you know, what, what is going on here? It was then that he told me that the objects had reappeared and had positioned themselves behind the moon. The blackout of all space monitoring programs was essential to keeping the lid on what had happened. I did not speak with my colleague Wong due to the fact that he was not supposed to be speaking with anyone and was risking even his own life even calling me back. But what I do know is that these objects reappeared sometime earlier this month and positioned themselves in a circular type alignment which allowed them to dock to the backside of the moon or just above the backside of the moon so as to remain virtually invisible to sky watchers. The things are up there and they're just beyond our view of sight when we look up at the moon. We don't know what they are, what they're doing or what they're going to do. We do know that there have already been fluctuations in Earth's gravity field and the gravity field which links the moon to the Earth. These things are stationary, and they are at this very moment sitting behind the moon. No movement, no radio signals, no nothing. We are at a standstill as to what will happen next or if these things will suddenly reveal themselves. It also calls into question just what it is we think about the moon and is there a reason these things chose the moon to begin with to migrate to. You also take into account the recent ballistic Topol mission launch led by Russia, which was witnessed from space by Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano after having seen a strange afterglow above the Earth, which looked like a missile contrail. The thing that is strange about this is that the Topol missile uses solid fuel as propellant, so it cannot have been the dump that the astronauts saw. I'm not sure now what caused the cloud, but it's clearly associated with the missile itself. Now couple that with the recent shutdown of NASA and the furlough of 98% of its employees and the shutdown of the International Space Station's live feed, I think 